Hi everyone, our project is the Automated Indoor Nursery. We are group 10 and I am Mariana Lozano, one of the electrical engineers in the group. The purpose of our project is to create an indoor plant system that will provide enough water and sunlight to keep our two herbs, parsley and basil, alive. This device will be able to monitor all the components needed to help these herbs grow and stay healthy. Using an indoor garden allows for a stable food supply for consumers, whether it's at home, a restaurant, or retailers. The motivation for our project was to provide ease of mind to customers so they can be worry-free while they are away on vacation or a business trip. We plan for our enclosure to last at least two weeks without customer assistance needed. This means that our reservoir and water tank must hold enough water to supply for a certain period of time. We will also be planting one basil and one parsley pot outside of our enclosure to see how it grows outside the perfect environment needed. The table shown here shows the list of objectives the team set for our project. Our goal is to meet all these objectives as well as provide functionality of our entire product at the end of the semester. Our enclosure is to automatically provide water and sunlight. It must be easy to use and will allow the customer to view snippets of how their plants are doing via the camera. The use of sensors is also required to provide levels and information about how the herbs are doing. By setting these objectives, the team has a set checklist to cross off as we build our system and most importantly, provide ease of mind for the user while they are away. The market specifications were laid out because these give the product a more user-friendly feel and help us keep them in mind as to what we must do to keep this enclosure as light and manageable as can be for the customer. Some requirements we've set are that the overall system must weigh less than 30 pounds and dimensions must be less than 10 cubic feet. These two are important for the customer because if they want to move it from one place to another around their home, they should be able to do that easily. The use of engineer specifications was important to lay out because they are used to drive the project constraints. These five specifications are important to ensure our system is functioning correctly. It must be able to detect the levels of humidity, for example, so it can then change as needed whether it needs to be more humid or less. Light must also be measured because these herbs require a certain amount of light a day. Information must be communicated back to the system using the Wi-Fi module. And water flow must also be controlled so we don't drown the herbs or under provide the necessary amount. This slide shows a sketch of what we want the enclosure to look like. As you can see from the picture, we've got an articulating nozzle, a water pump, water tank, our plants, the reservoir that sits below, and then our sensors and camera, and the PCB design with microcontroller and Wi-Fi module. This slide shows our enclosure building. The picture on the right shows what the system looks like so far with the pieces we have already bought and acquired. We do not have pieces such as the reservoir and the water tank yet, but those will be ordered soon or bought in store once we know the exact dimensions of what we need. Looking at the picture, you can see we've got the main frame of our enclosure, our pots, with our parsley and basil seeds, our potting mix, our food, and then the two pots that are sitting outside of the enclosure are the ones that will be tested outside to see how they grow in different environments. This next section will cover our block diagrams. We have our hardware block diagram, software block diagram, and power block diagram. Hello everyone, my name is Nicholas Leon. I'm also one of the electrical engineers working on this project. In the hardware block diagram, one can see that the microcontroller acts like the brain for the device, communicating with all other components attached to the PCB directly or via relay for switching on and off purposes. Hey everyone, my name is Hamza Ula and I'm the computer engineer on the team. Um, for our software block diagram, it is basically broken, broken up into three components. The website front end, the website back end, and hardware development. Uh, the Wi-Fi module in the hardware side will basically transfer the sensor data to the website backend server. The server will either process the data and send it to the database, or um, if the front end requests data, generally it will already be processed and in the database. So when the processed data is used in the website front end, um, it is placed in the appropriate component to be displayed for the user to interact with and view the information um, and eventually interact with the PCB and our plant management system. Hello everybody, my name is Austin Ordos. I am one of the electrical engineers uh, part of this group, as well as Mariana and Nick. I will be going over the power block diagram. As you can see from this chart, we have an AC voltage input that goes through a transformer, which this is out that output. It then goes through a rectifier bridge, which only produces the positive waveforms. Goes to the vil uh, the filter or capacitor, which smooths out that uh, waveform. Then uh, the AC voltage goes to a voltage regulator, which spits out pure DC, and that pure DC goes straight into our product. 
So this next section is labeled hardware design and will be primarily covered by myself and Nick. Uh, first, we'll be going over hardware testing. So each component that we bought, we made sure we tested it and it works to its full capability. After that, we'll give you a gloss over our, of our PCB schematic and everything that's involved with that. And we'll also give you a PCB layout. So you guys get a good visualization of what our PCB will look like, what's on it, and um, how it all works together. Our final thing that's in this section is uh, components. So we're going to go over the components that we bought for this project, why we bought them, and why, why it was a good choice for our overall product. Uh, in our first slide of hardware testing, you will see that we tested the relay module, the green killer, and the peristaltic pump. Um, it was pretty much simple. We just put a positive voltage in and a ground to see if everything was working. And pretty much um, at like some points, we pulled out the multimeter and tested to see if the output was correct. As you can see on the three pictures below, um, minus the peristaltic pump, everything's like working, everything's lighting up, everything looks good. So this is our second slide in hardware design. Uh, this is a continuation of the previous slide of hardware testing. As you can see with the three components listed below, we have the diaphragm pump, the Wi-Fi module, and the Arduino Uno R3. With the diaphragm pump, we just grabbed two alligator clamps and hooked it up and it was fully functional. With the Wi-Fi module, we pretty much did the same thing. We connected it to its input and the ground. And as you can see, the blue and red LED lit up, showing that it's fully functional. And our last component here is the Arduino Uno R3. Uh, same di um, deal. We pretty much um, inputted the voltage, uh, attached it to ground. And as you can see, it is fully functional. And last but not least, this is our final slide of hardware testing. And the two components listed below is our weather shield Arduino and our pH sensor. Um, so as you can see with the weather shield Arduino, we inputted a 3.3 voltage, uh, which we then later tested. And as you can see, we are getting that nice 3.3 voltage that we want. And at, with the pH sensor um, below, we just attached an alligator clip uh, of five volts. And as you can see with the green LED, it indicates that it's working. So that actually concluded our hardware testing. The ESP-01S is a Wi-Fi module that works by establishing a two-way connection between itself and the device that is connected to it via Wi-Fi. The input signal from the Arduino Omega transmitting to the ESP-01S gets reduced from five volts to 3.3 volts due to those two resistors behaving as a voltage divider. This module runs on 3.3 volts, so the input voltage is such. The reset pin can be left unconnected due to the microcontroller being able to handle that task correctly. Pins two and three are general purpose input and output GPIOs with internal pull-up resistors, so do not have to be connected to anything. TXD sends the output signal to the microcontroller. The SC1117 is a series of high performance positive voltage regulators designed for use in applications requiring low drawbout performance at 800 milliamps. The input voltage for these are 15 volts max. This version outputs 3.3 volts. 10 microfarad capacitors are added at the input to filter unwanted signals and noise that the input connection might introduce and to filter any unwanted oscillations that may happen at the output. The RUCAM 2 megapixel mini is a camera that both supports I2C and SPI communication protocol. The I2C interface is for the sensor configuration, and the SPI interface is for the camera commands and data stream. All input and output ports are 5 volt and 3.3 volt tolerant, and 2 megapixel camera means it is an HD camera that supports 1080p. It doesn't only offer the capability to add a camera interface, which doesn't have in some low-cost microcontrollers, but also provides the capability to add multiple cameras to a single microcontroller. The pump that regulates the pH level and the pump that regulates the irrigation system both function nearly identical. Diodes D1 and D2 are implemented in order to eliminate the back electromagnetic field of the relay coil. When the Arduino Omega sends a high signal, the corresponding NPN transistor will activate by connecting to the ground on the other side. This will allow for the relay to switch and the LED to turn on. A 1 kilo ohm resistor is added to minimize the current flow through the LED. A too high resistor value will not allow for the LED to turn on. 
This allows for a better visual representation for when the relay is switching. These are the types of connectors and pin headers that allow for direct connection to external components such as both pumps, power supply, sensors, and microcontroller. The pin headers are rated 500 volts and the two pin connectors are rated at 250 volts. This slide covers our PCB layout, which has been ordered and currently on the way. On the left, as you can see, uh, this is how all the components are gonna be wired together and going to be able to communicate. On the right is an actual 3D image of what the PCB will look like when it arrives. The next few slides that we'll be going over is components. As you can see listed below, these are the components that we thought were the best choice um, for our overall project. Some of these components are subject to change, um, but as of now, this is what we thought uh, would this is what we thought would be our best choice. As you can see listed below, um, this slide covers the, pretty much the pressure diaphragm, the dosing pump, the pH sensor, the light, uh, the UV light, and pretty much the weather shield and the liquid level sensor. So this is a continuation of the components. Uh, the components listed below is the light sensor, the Wi-Fi module, the power supply, relay module, the Arduino mini camera, uh, the nozzles and the vinyl tubing. As you can see, we pretty much have the specifications of each component as well as the pricing listed to the side. Um, all these are pretty much uh, we thought was our best pick uh, to include into our product. Uh, I believe the relay module may be subject to change, um, but as of right now, this is as it stands. So this is our final slide in hardware design and the uh, last continuation of components. As you can see listed below, these are just the small components that we bought um, to pretty much manipulate the circuit to do what we wanted it to do. Um, nothing really important here. Um, just uh, as you can see, the resistors and capacitors, the MOSFETs, BJT resistors, xenodiodes, and the voltage regulators that we um, kind of included into our design. The next thing we'll be looking at is the software design architecture, the Internet of Things layers that influences that, as well as the database queries and the website design flow. The simplified uh, Internet of Things um, architecture is basically comprised of three layers, which is the application layer, the network layer, and the perception layer. The application layer would be our web application. The network layer is the server or database. And the perception layer would be all the sensor data coming in to the PCB that would eventually be used by our web application. For the web application, we are using a Merge DAC, which stands for MongoDB, ExpressJS, React, and Node.js. Um, so React is our front-end framework. Uh, we are using Semantic UI for our cascading style sheet framework, as well as GraphQL for our querying language in the front-end. And um, we are going to be implementing a progressive web application which will mim mimic the feel of a app on a phone, um, which allows you to download it from a uh, browser on your um, mobile device. Um, the back end of our web application will be the ExpressJS server, um, a NoSQL, a MongoDB um, database, as well as a Node.js package manager. When we were choosing a CSS framework to build our application, um, the two choices were really between React Bootstrap and another one called Semantic UI. Um, we, went, we ended up going with Semantic UI, um, especially because of their um, ability to create forms. Um, and looking at these two uh, implementations of a form, on the right-hand side from Semantic UI, um, we can pass in specific attributes into the same component, um, which will um, basically render out everything you see on the left, but within less components and allowing us to really make the components more extensible so that when we want to use it in other uh, 
places in our application. Um, we would simply need to pass uh, JSON into the props and that would populate the specific component attribute to build um, the components we need for the form specifically. Using uh, MongoDB with GraphQL's querying language um, allows us to take advantage of MongoDB's um, return of a document object um, while using GraphQL's um, querying capability to um, really narrow down what we're looking for without with while removing extraneous um, returned information from the database. Um, looking at the uh, diagram on the right, we can see how um, GraphQL is used in conjunction with MongoDB. Um, uh, at the very bottom in the yellow box, we have Resolver. So any information we do receive from the database, we can um, manipulate and parse with our, within the resolvers. Um, although we are not using subscriptions, which is mentioned in the above, box above that, um, the query definitions um, basically represent the get request and the mutations represent any changes to the server. Um, so our um, post data or update data the type definition is something unique within GraphQL, so um, the specific typing of the information expected um, can be defined. Taking a look at an example um, mutation here of creating a user, um, for our program there is going to be a login, and when the user logs in, a token is created that um, represents their session. Um, so whenever they navigate to certain parts of the website, a token will be expected for them and the password will be hashed. When we create a plant, um, we'll be passing in certain parameters, which you can see at the bottom there in the variable. Um, the actual query is written in the operation above on the left. Um, and, um, we'll be passing in certain parameters and, um, when we return the information, um, that information represents um, the base information about the plants for its survivability. When the first set of sensor data comes in about the plant, um, we will run the mutation called set history, which will basically initialize the parameters of the database for um, the plant sensor history. Um, and if we look at the next slide, um, the output of that sensor data is um, the epoch time, the time that sensor data was created, as well as um, an array of information regarding the sensor data um, at that given epoch time. When subsequent sensor data comes in, um, we basically update the database by appending it with the new information. Um, as well as the time that Epoch was created. And this allows us to create a running history of the plant, which we can um, use to create charts for the user to look at uh, the history of their plants as it grew. When the user first um, enters the website, they are met with a modal, which allows them to either view um, uh, the about page, the login, and the sign up. Uh, the login and the sign up are pretty much identical apart from their functionality. Uh, when they sign up, they will, once successful, they will go to the dashboard. And that is <clears throat> very similar to the actual login as well. Um, once they are logged in and they are meet the dashboard, um, we have the ability for them to add their plant device. Um, this represents basically the PCB um, and the Wi-Fi module so that um, it is synced to their plant. Um, once the device is added, um, they can add their plant information. Um, this is an example of just two plants for now, um, but they can add it and um, it will represent whether or not they have a successful plant either on um, the left or the right side of the planter. Um, now, when they have successfully created their plant, 
um, their plants will show up in a card on their dashboard where they can either manage their plant or view the statistics. Um, when they manage their plant, um, they are met with the ability to switch which side of the plant they want to manage, as well as several options of what to manage. Um, right now, these are just a few of the options, which are temperature, humidity, light, and moisture. Um, if they look at their statistics, um, they can look at the history, basically, in a visual representation um, for how their plants grew given a certain time range and if that time range exists for the history. Next is the administrative content. This shows our work distribution, our budget, and our progress so far and the issues we have encountered. Mariana, Austin, and Nick are the three electrical engineers responsible for the printed circuit board. We have worked together on the testing, PCB schematic, and prototyping. Hamza is the sole computer engineer and therefore is responsible for the software aspect of the project. He's been working on our website and interface. Here you can see the budget we have as of September 12th. As you can see, we have ordered most of our components. This is still subject to change depending on what happens when our PCB arrives. If changes are needed, we will have to update this to reflect that whether it's more of a certain piece needed or a whole new component that is compatible with our PCB. Issues that we've encountered so far for board design, for figuring out passive filters and components, and the compatibility via pinouts, dealing with component shortages, communication between components, and acquiring data sheets for certain components. The progress we have so far is that our PCB is designed. We have sent our first attempt to the distributor and are waiting for it to come back. Once we get this, we can start soldering. The basic skeletal design of our enclosure has been made. Our website is up and running, but it's not fully completed and we have gathered the components we know for sure needed for our basic design, which this is still subject to change depending on if they work with our PCB or not. Thank you. Any questions?